Apple has finally revealed their new M2 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, and one of the biggest questions I'm seeing floating around online is exactly how the M2 chip compares to the higher end M1 Pro chip that's available in the $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro, because some people actually think that the M2 is basically as fast, but they're wrong, way wrong. So what I'm gonna do in this video is compare everything between the M2 and M1 Pro, including all aspects of the performance, as well as the feature differences to help you decide if you can save a lot more money by going with a new M2 MacBook. Now before I jump into estimating the performance of the M2 chip and comparing it to the M1, I want to compare the actual M2 and M1 Pro dies and talk about the main differences that we can see. Thankfully, Frederick Orange on Twitter created this graphic analysis of the dies, so let's quickly run through some of the main differences and what they'll mean to you. First up, you can see that the RAM interface on the M2 supports up to 100 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, and that's because it connects two chips of LPDDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz clock speed, which I honestly didn't expect from Apple because that RAM is pretty expensive. Now the M1 Pro die essentially gets two of those basically identical interfaces with identical RAM speed, which means that it has a wider 256-bit memory bus us, allowing for more memory traffic to flow through it, which means that some apps that really rely on RAM will be faster, like photo editing. Moving on, you can see the M2's GPU only comes with up to 10 cores instead of 16 on the M1 Pro, which gives us a little hint at the performance we should be expecting. And as far as the CPU, the M2 has four performance cores compared to eight performance cores on the M1 Pro. And you might notice that the M2 cores are actually quite a bit larger, so each one should actually be more powerful. But as far as the efficiency cores, the M2 has four of them compared to only two on the M1 Pro, so this means that the M2 chip should be more efficient when running simple tasks, leading to better battery life. Then we have the neural engine, which looks to be quite a bit larger on the M2 chip because it's actually the second generation neural engine with up to 15.8 trillion operations per second directly from the A15 chip compared to the M1 Pro's older version with only 11 trillion. Now this red section shows five I.O. points on the M2 chip, with two of them being used up by the two Thunderbolt controllers behind them, meaning that you should get full Thunderbolt transfer speeds from both of the ports on the M2 MacBooks. However, the really weird downside is that the M2 MacBooks still only support one external monitor, which is basically an artificial software limitation because the M2 chip definitely has enough graphics performance to support two displays. Place. Now on the M1 Pro, everything gets doubled because the 14-inch MacBook Pro comes with a lot more ports, including three Thunderbolt 4 ports. And then finally, the last thing I want to point out is the media engine, which has actually been upgraded on the M2, and perhaps the number one benefit it has over the M1 Pro, which I'll get into in just a minute. But now, it's time to get into the actual performance charts and benchmarks to show you guys how these two compare. Now, Apple did give us numbers for the M2 chip's performance boost over the M1 chip, 18% faster for the multi-core CPU performance and 35% faster for the GPU. But as far as the single core performance, we're gonna have to estimate that ourselves. And the best way to do that is to compare the performance difference between the A14 chip and the A15 chip within the iPhone, because as I showed you guys in yesterday's video, the M2 chip literally just packs A15 performance cores compared to the M1, which packs A14 performance cores. So the difference in performance should be the same for the M2 chip compared to the M1. According to our iPhone comparison video from last year, the A15's single core performance is 9.3% faster than the A14. So if we bring that difference over to the M1 and M2 situation, we should expect the single core performance of the M2 chip to sit at around 1,876 points, which is about 6.3% faster than the M1 Pro. So what this means for you is that the M2 chip should be faster at common single core tasks like opening up apps and browsing the web, so it should feel a bit more snappy compared to the M1 Pro. 
Now moving on to multi-core performance, I added Apple's 18% performance boost claim to the M1 to give us 8,738 points for the M2. But as you can see, the binned 8-core M1 Pro is still 13.5% faster than the M2, and the unbinned 10-core M1 Pro is a massive 44% faster than the M2. So yes, if you need as much multi-core CPU performance as you can get for things like Xcode Pro, programming, photo editing, music production, or whatever else, the M1 Pro is still the way to go, but you obviously have to pay a lot more to get it. Now moving on to the graphics performance, I added Apple's 35% performance boost claim to the M1 to give us 28,874 points for the 10 core M2 chip. And then I simply took a fifth away from that to give us 23,099 points for the binned 8 core M2 model in the MacBook Air. And now comparing that to the M1 Pro, even the binned 14 core model destroys the full 10 core M2 model being about 20% faster, and the full 16 core M1 Pro is an even larger 37.5% faster. So once again, the M1 Pro is much faster in terms of graphics performance, making it more viable for high performance tasks like gaming. But honestly, the M2 chip getting over 28,000 points in metal is more than enough for 90% of the people out there, and it's probably going to be more than good enough for some light gaming like League of Legends or Minecraft or whatever else. And as far as the CPU performance, the M1 chip was already good enough for the majority of common tasks and even productivity work as well, so the M2's CPU is definitely enough for almost everybody. And it's actually pretty nice that Apple gave users the option to upgrade to 24 gigabytes of RAM for those who really need more than 16 gigs without having to pay $2,400 for the 14-inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM. But now, the last thing I've got to go through is the one area where the M2 chip will likely be faster than the M1 Pro, and that's video editing using common formats like H.264 and HEVC. Currently, when exporting video, the M1 Pro chip is being drastically limited by the encoders, and we know this because exporting a 5-minute 4K H.264 video takes exactly 2 minutes and 55 seconds no matter which M1 Pro model you're using, and it's only 9 seconds faster than the original M1 chip, which is much slower across the board in terms of both CPU and GPU performance. But now, the new M2 chip has a brand new media engine that now supports 8K, H.264, HEVC, and ProRes encoding and decoding, compared to the M1 Pro, which only has 8K ProRes encoding, but not 8K, H.264, and HEVC. And that 8K encoding scales down to 4K linearly, which will be four times faster than 8K because it has four times less pixels. So basically, this confirms that the M2 chip will actually be faster for editing those common H.264 and HVC formats. But as far as the real-world performance for other tasks, we're definitely going to be comparing it directly when we get these new M2 Max in next month. So if you haven't already, click the circle above to subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos, and definitely check out our M2 MacBook Air Buyer's Guide right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.